Malaysia, a multiracial, multicultural country, the tourism campaign dream. It's really hard to pick a favourite thing about Malaysia when the diversity and the differences are the DNA of the country. I've lived in KL all my life, transferring to five different schools, living around at least 10 different districts, and yet, I still don't know how I truly feel about KL. If Penang has its food, Sabah and Sarawak have their nature and culture, straight cities like Ipoh and Malacca have the colonial heritage, KL is mostly about... Hmm... Many people who live here are from somewhere else, and there's a ton of small neighbourhoods attached to it. You don't really know where KL starts, or where it ends, Growing up in a, in a city that was in the process of defining itself does invariably have an effect on the people living in it. I mean, you're not really sure what it is you are. Are you a you know, quote-unquote urbanite? You know, is, is, was KL a bunch of suburbs tied together by, by rubber bands? Is it a transient city? Is it, does no one belong here because they are here? This is Azwan Mazan, also known as Words Manifest. He's a writer, rapper and street photographer born and bred in KL. In his efforts to capture the essence of KL, Azwan once dedicated an exhibition purely about KL in its realist form, with a few other local photographers. It's really hard to find people who genuinely like KL, for its good and bad. But Azwan, he loves it. It's not fun to be labelled a KL person or a KLite because other people have, have already subscribed to different definitions of that before you can. What was growing up like in KL? Uh, okay, let's see. I came of age, I guess, in the late 80s. So growing up in KL during that time, was interesting. KL was coming into his own. It was figuring out that it had an identity to live up to. In terms of before, we, uh, KL declared itself the capital city. It was a bandaraya, the only one in the country at the time. There was a lot of road work, there was a lot of new construction. The economic boom was, was in full swings. It was trying to fit itself into that mold. My late brother uh, was not born in KL. So when she moved to KL for the first time, he was, he was a teenager. Uh, my brother told me that uh, I don't think I'll ever get to see the kind of KL that you will be living in when you get to be my age. But that's fine because you know, the KL that we're in now is definitely not the KL I, I arrived in. KL is going to and needs to keep changing in order to become itself, ultimately. KL, as much as we love it, will not always be the KL that we love. But my, my hometown has shaped me and I guess the, the only thing I can really hope for is to be able to help shape it a little bit and, and not like screw it up, like it screwed me up. Kidding. <laughs> I like the small jabs you do to KL, I do exactly the same. Oh yeah, I mean, you know. KL uppercuts me every day, so what, I can't take jabs at it, is it? It's very true. <laughs> if you're like me, and you want to get to know KL just a little bit better, his best advice is to... Literally, get, get lost. Get lost in KL. That will, will help you to mentally accept KL. It's not all travel brochure, clean and, and pretty. It's still a work in progress. People tend to think of KL as being these very reductive, narrow lanes, which is kind of unfair to the city itself, and by extension, the people and the culture that you know, survives on it. Uh, don't really have any presumptions because uh, that KL does not have any presumptions about you. I guess the cool thing about KL is the fact that when you're here, you can build your own identity can be what you want and chances are there's always a community or someone who would appreciate your aspirations regardless of how crazy they are and because everyone is from everywhere people work really hard here they want to always build something they push you to be better and to live in an environment like that i think i owe a lot to kl too <laughs> <laughs>